Hello everyone. My name is Angie Harris, Certified Mindfulness Instructor, and today's live actually was inspired by a few uh, DMs that I received over the last couple of days, and also a workshop that I did at Steffi's Place a Grief Center in Red Bank, New Jersey. I live in the Northeast of the United States, and I do have the honor and privilege of teaching mindfulness with people that have gone through a significant loss. And we teach mindfulness for stress reduction, we teach mindfulness for grief, and we teach mindfulness to thrive within losing someone or something that was extremely important to you. So this live is really inspired by a few of the folks that I've met along the way. The holidays are here in the United States. This time of year is extremely busy for Halloween and then Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa. Right? And we have all these holidays coming up, Christmas and New Year's and all of these awesome times to celebrate. But for folks that have gone through a significant loss, this could also be a triggering time to feel extra lonely, extra sad, extra frust uh, frustrated, extra mad. All of those feelings can really get kicked up by the what I like to call kind of mick happiness that we see really inundated on every social media page and television and magazines, happy families celebrating together. And if we don't feel like we have that, if we like feel like our happiness is really dependent upon a person that was in our life that's no longer in our life, seeing these images can really kick up a lot of things. So I ask that as you move through your day, whether you're someone that's experienced loss or whether you're someone who's just really excited about being with your loved ones at the holiday, please know that there are some people walking among us that don't quite feel the same way this time of year. And if I really approach them with curiosity and care and an open spirit to accept where they are, even though it might not be where I am, I can actually comfort them a lot just by my kindness, just by my presence. Right. So just know that some people, when they say they don't like the holiday season or this time of year, it's coming from a place of real significant sadness, depression, even loneliness. And really at the core of all of those things is love, the loss of a love. So what can you do to help? Maybe you know someone who's in this situation specifically, or maybe I'm speaking directly to you. And please know if I am, I'm the same. You're not alone. So many of us are out there smiling, doing our daily errands, working, being in rinks and on fields and dropping kids off at school and in grocery stores and we're smiling and we're moving and grooving, but really there's something that's really not feeling quite right on the inside because we are managing a loss. We are thriving within our grief and that's why you see us out and living, but we might not be feeling quite as excited as images and marketing and advertising would tell us that we should around this time of year. So first, just know that you're not alone and that a lot of us feel this way. If you know someone who has recently lost someone that they love, we sometimes get scared or nervous to ask them about the person that they lost. So we say, how are you doing? And they might say, fine, or hanging in or it's just not the same, or they might really get into things and tell stories. I encourage you to listen to their stories and maybe even ask specifically about the person that passed away, maybe a favorite memory that they shared, or did they like the holidays? Is there any memory that you can recall that brings you joy with that person? Let their spirit and their life still live on through story. So as a mindfulness teacher, we actually honor story, the story in our heads. We honor that story and we have skillful ways of coming back to the present moment when the story wants to take us to another time. And especially with grievers, going to another time is a real source of sadness and stress and loneliness because the person that's in those stories is no longer with us to create new memories and stories. So there's two things that we do at the center where I teach mindfulness when it comes to grief specifically. We give options. So as you're telling the story about someone that has passed, 
you can really feel those feelings and tap into those sensations that live physically in your body, right? The emotion will speak to you and the emotion will speak to you through physical sensation. It might be in your stomach, your chest, maybe the foot is doing this all of the time where before the loss you would be able to sit and your legs didn't move. You might realize that you're clenching your jaw, grinding your teeth. So we would ask you to call attention to where the emotion is living physically in the body and then breathe into that spot. So take a nice mindful breath, breathing in and breathing out. Breathing with awareness. That means you know you're breathing when you're breathing. And if you're not a mindfulness teacher, but you have a friend or a loved one that experienced loss, you can do this too by embodying this yourself while you're listening to their story. This will help you to stay present as the friend speaks about their loved one. This will help you to manage your own emotion. So much of us uh, want to share that compassion and console. And when someone is grieving, they really do need to feel what they're feeling when they're feeling it and have someone allow that emotion to be raw and be heavy and just hold it with them just by listening. In meditation, we call this deep listening. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing that you can practice. And one way you can practice it is just by sitting and embodying this presence, going back to your breath while you're listening, right? Not feeling like you have to say anything at all, just sitting there and listening and letting this person express their grief. Calling to your attention where your physical sensations live that are manifesting your emotions are going to manifest somewhere. Go to that spot, right? And breathe in and breathe out as you're sitting there. If you feel comfortable enough sharing that practice with them through articulation, through saying, where do you feel it? When you tell the story of your loved one, what's happening? What do you notice within you, right? And let them actually say, I don't know, or I feel so angry. Well, how do you know you're angry? Where does it live? We know we're angry because our loved one isn't here anymore, but how physically do you know? What's happening? Are we like this? Are we like this? Are we not sleeping? And when you're not sleeping, what's happening to keep you awake? Do you notice your legs want to get up and move? Do you notice that you aren't even able to stay still laying in bed? You need to get up and walk around. So really helping the person to process by telling the story of their loved one, keeping the memory and the spirit of their loved one alive through story and then calling them back into this present moment by asking where do those feelings live? How do you know that you feel that? Where does it live? And if you don't feel comfortable enough doing that, but you do just want to be there for the person, embodying that same lesson and that same practice by you doing it yourself. As you're listening, cue into what's happening within you. This is part of deep listening. And please know that to be there for someone else this time of year or any time of year, when they're grieving, all you need to do is listen. You don't need to have profound words. You don't need to have a solution to their problem because grief is not a problem to be solved, right? I'm going to say that one again. Grief is not a problem to be solved. So the mind has a really hard time with that because the mind is the ultimate problem solver and it wants to solve the problem of grief and it can't. It can't. So we have to let our bodies, our brains, our emotions go through this process and we don't say healing as much because if I said healing to someone, a mother or father that just lost their child, I don't know if we ever heal from that, but we do continue on for the other children that we have, for our partner, our loved one, and we can actually flourish within it if we allow ourselves to be sad, to be mad, to be really angry, to say it, do it doesn't make any sense or even words like it's not fair. Let them say what they need to say without holding any judgment toward them, knowing that those feelings will pass if they're allowed to get them out and process them on their own timetable when they feel them in that moment. And what an honor it is that they're trusting those raw emotions with you. It's such an honor that I get to share stories of people that have crossed over. I get to share uh, children saying that they were actually angry at their parents at some point for not doing X, Y, Z, and they get to voice that. And then so much healing comes from that. There's some anger that happens when someone crosses over, right? Grief is not in this perfect little box with a bow on top where we get to say everything that we 
wanted to say and we get to do everything that we wanted to do before the person passed. So if I can be a source, a soundboard for someone to actually heal through words of saying what they would have said if the person was still here, what an honor that is for me. And if I approach it from that, just listening is me helping. That is me helping this person through grief. Well, then the whole situation transitions and shifts from me consoling and patting them on the back, almost wanting them to just get through the crying piece and then get on to the smiling piece after. It transitions and shifts to whatever is happening is okay. And just by me sitting here and uh, holding the weight of the grief with you, I am supporting you. And from that place, I'm actually supporting my own healing. I'm supporting my own thriving, my own flourishing. I'm Angie Harris. I'm a certified mindfulness instructor. I come on Facebook Live about one to two times a week to discuss how we can use mindful awareness and presence to help us better our lives, help us understand what's happening in this present moment, and whether we better it or not, accepting it because it's what's here, even if we don't agree, even if we don't agree, and how to really cultivate a state of happiness through awareness and through presence. The website is www.theintegratedmind.com, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Goodbye.